Welcome, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's screencast video is on Autodesk Format 360 and some of the commands that are the advanced modeling tools that are located here in the ribbon. You have commands such as joining, cutting a solid from another solid, sweeping, creating a cover, loft, offsetting a certain amount, shelling out, and also fill it. So let's take a look at some of these commands. First thing I'd like to do is use this command here to just create a cylinder, uh, another cube over here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to manipulate this just a little bit so that it interacts with this other one over here. It eats into it. Now, I'll create another one over here and do the same thing again because I want to work with some of the commands uh, individually on different objects just so you get an idea of the difference between um, using one command versus another. This first command that we have here called join two solids. If I select it, it'll ask me in the upper left corner over here, select the solid to be joined into. So if I pick this solid, then it says select solids to be added. I pick this one. And then I hit the screen che this check mark here and finish the command. It will join all of them together as a single entity. So if I were to tab, you can see that as I keep hitting the tab key, it'll cycle through what it can find, and eventually it will find all of them as a single unit. One of the things you will also visually see as well when you do the join command is that where the edges intersect, you'll get that nice clean line, whereas over here, this one has not been joined, so you don't see the lines. If I use the next command that's available here, called cut, I can start the command, and again the command in the upper left corner says select the solid to be cut into. So if I pick this one, then it says select solids to be removed. So I'll click this one, and then I'll click the screen, this check mark here to finish it, and it will remove that piece from uh, the main piece. So if I tab into this piece here, and I right click to move it, um, there are obviously contextual commands that show up on a wheel here, and there are different commands like move, create a group, delete, rotate, scale, array, and so on. And we'll try to cover these two as we're working with the software. So I'm going to use the move command here to just move it out of the way. So you can see that it did actually cut into this other object here. The third command that they give you is called a sweep. A sweep is a pretty um, rudimentary uh, Boolean operation that is in most other 3D applications as well. And the way this functions is you are selecting lines for a profile or a face of a profile and then having it swept along an edge. So let's go ahead and draw some geometry to act as our profile. So I'll head over here and I'll use this line command. And I do something basic. One of the things, too, that you want to look at when you're drawing is making sure what axis you're drawing against. You can see that there is a UCS icon. And if I click on that UCS icon, I'm actually drawing on that plane. And it helps out a lot. You will also see that you get other axis lines as well when you're drawing. And be cautious of your orientation, too, because it does want to snap to a lot of content. And so for now, I'm just going to draw another line here, zoom in, and draw this last line here. And so now I have a little triangle that's going to act as a face that I'm going to sweep along an edge. So again, I start the command. It will ask me to select a face or edges for the sweep profile. So I'll zoom in here, and I'll pick this face. Then it says select a face or edge for the sweep path. So if I click this edge, and I want to click more than one, if I hold the control key down, 
then I can pick the edge that I want. Whoops, let's try that again. Um, I'll click that edge, I'll hold control, pick that edge, and hold the shift and press and hold the mouse wheel down to rotate my view, hold the control key down, click that edge as well. And you'll see those three edges highlight. If I hit the green check, this check mark here, it will go through and it will sweep that face of a triangle along those edges. And you can't see those here and here because they're actually inside this box. Now if I were to tab into this, uh, let's say I tab into that face and I hit the delete key to delete it, I may or may not see that. It may have formed it, it may not have formed it. In this case, because there was solid geometry, it did not form it. Okay. We have other commands as well. This one's called cover. This is an interesting one, so let's do this. I'm going to do a window crossing and delete all this content for now. Let's put in a geometry, piece of geometry, and push and pull this geometry a little bit. Oops, pulled it the wrong way. See? So be very careful about how you pushing and pulling. Make sure you're pulling it in the correct axis and direction that you want. And I'm going to pick that point and pull that point this way. So I've got an interesting shape here. And the cover command is one such that if you're working on a on a shape like this and you've lost the top part of it, the, the cover in essence, you can get that back. So to do that, head over and start that command for cover. And it will ask you to select the edge to be enclosed. So you'll want to pick the edges that you need, which I'm going to pick these. You don't, in this case, you don't have to hold the shift key. And once all of them are selected and it, and it forms a nice closed loop, if I hit the screen, this check mark here, it'll put in that cover again. So that's the cover command. The next command they give you is loft, which is right here. And the way the loft functions is uh, very similar to standard loft Boolean operation commands, where you pick a whole bunch of profiles and um, tell it to loft. It basically covers, if you will, a blanket over the profile, and that blanket conforms to the shape of the edges of the profiles. I'm going to draw a simple rectangle over here. And then I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to right click and I'm going to array it. And I'm going to array it, say, five times. And I'm going to array it up. Now, again, be cautious of your movement. As you can see, it wanted to jump. See that? So I'm going to do that. And the reason is because it gives me the ability to have multiple faces where I can left click and push and pull the edges so that I can reshape what I want for each profile, and therefore um, create an interesting loft based upon the, the, um, each of the edges that are being readjusted. And again, be very careful on how you push and pull the edges too, because it will want to snap um, to other objects. Okay? So I'm just going to do a few of these like this, just so you get an idea of what the loft command is going to do. So I have a whole bunch of flat surfaces that have edges that are at different shapes, as you can see here. Not too drastic, but you can make it as drastic, drastic as you want. Um, say, for example, like that. If I head over to the command and I click this loft command, it will ask me to select a face or edge for the first loft profile. So this is where you need to kind of zoom in a little bit and make sure that your face that you're touching is highlighted like that, left click, and then it'll say um, select a face or edge for the next loft profile. And you just have to go through this process of picking each one. And when you're finished picking all of them, hit the check mark, and it will loft them and make a very interesting shape. So, you know, one of the ways you can maybe apply this is if you have certain profiles that are cross sections of, uh, of a building. And as you use this loft command, it'll shape the building. There are a couple of others here. This one's offset. So if you want to 
increase or decrease the size of a solid based upon an offset distance, you can do so. So let's delete this. And again, I like using the basic command here because uh, it makes a lot of sense. If I uh, go in and use this command, it'll ask me for the offset value, specify what you want, and I click OK, and then I touch this, and it will offset that object after I hit this check mark here. And as you can see, that negative one foot offset basically shrank the box. You have this one, which is shelling out the solid. And the way that functions is, again, you start the command, you specify the shell offset value. In this case, I have it as a negative one foot. I click OK, and I pick this top face, for example, hit the green check mark, and it will shell it out as so. You also have uh, this last one here called fillet. So I'm going to undo this so I don't have to build, worry about putting another cube in. So I'll go into the last command for the advanced model and click fillet. It'll ask you for a radius distance. I have it set to a foot. Click OK, pick the face that I want or edge that I want, and it will automatically fillet the edges that radius distance. So those are the commands for the advanced modeling tools in Formic360. Thank you very much for watching.